Have you ever seen subtitles as cool as these? Let me show you how to make them. So this is gonna be a pretty advanced technique inside of Fusion, but I'm gonna take you through it step by step. Uh, and I think anyone that has a basic understanding of Fusion uh, should be able to pull it off. So to start, we have to isolate our face. I'm hitting shift space bar and I'm adding magic mask. I'm gonna draw over my face here and I'm going to deselect everything around. Uh, just like so, so that we get just a mat of just our face. We can just leave it on faster. We don't need this to be better. And I'm going to track it forwards and backwards. All right, so we have our face tracked beautifully here. Uh, an issue we're gonna run into is my mouth because I'm talking through the sequence. So the trackers are gonna throw off my, my face tracking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a tracker. You can use either a point tracker or an IntelliTrack, either or is fine. I'm gonna place it somewhere close to my mouth. I'm gonna see if it can track right this dip right here because there's a bit of a shadow. I'm gonna track that forwards and backwards. It doesn't have to be a perfect track, it just has to be close. Once you have your track, you're going to add an ellipse to mask and you're not actually gonna plug it into the masking, you're gonna plug it into the foreground. So let's plug it over the foreground and let's resize our ellipse over our mouth. Let's try to keep it as small as possible so that I can uh, track the beard around it. Now in the tracker node, let's go to operation and select match move. Let's change the operator mode to mask. And now we're gonna have a mask of just our mouth, but we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna invert that mask and let's resize this ellipse and move it around a little bit. And now if we play this back, we have our face track, but our mouth is subtracted from that. Next, we're going to add a camera tracker node. We're going to hit preview auto track location so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna turn detection threshold down quite a bit to around 1.8 and minimum feature separation down to, let's say 0.013 is fine. Uh, and if we click on the viewer here, we can see our auto track locations and let's track our face. Let's quick take a second to shout out the sponsor of this video. Just kidding, I don't have one. But this is only my second DaVinci Resolve tutorial I've ever made. So if you like it, please leave a comment down below, hit subscribe, check out my other stuff. Uh, a lot of tutorials are coming up soon. Back to the video. Once our track is complete, let's go to over to the solve tab and hit solve. As you can see, we have a lot of red and orange trackers, which generally is not very good. For this purpose, it doesn't matter as much, but it is helpful if we clean it up a little bit. So let, with the camera tracker selected, let's go to maximum solve error and just drag over it. That already selected 973 trackers. Let's delete those trackers. Now let's resolve. And now we have a solve error of 1.6 pixels, which is not great. This is 4K footage, so it could be a lot worse, but this is gonna be good enough for our purposes. Now in our camera tracker, let's go to the export page. Let's go to 3D transform, click unaligned, select all your uh, tracking points and hit set from selection. Now click aligned again. Now we're gonna add a merge 3D node just to view our camera tracker because I wanna clean it up a little bit more. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and this is gonna look different for everyone. In my case, it did a pretty bad track actually because it's picking it up in a lot of different places on the Z axis. As you can see, the biggest cluster is right here. This is what my head is gonna be. With the camera's tracker selected, I'm just gonna turn down my locator size so I can see this a little bit clear. Uh, and everything that's not actually on my face, so all of these guys here, we're just gonna select them and hit delete to get rid of them because this is not gonna help our track at all. We want our tracker points just to be located around our face. Anything that's far off means the tracker just uh, did that wrong. Okay, we can delete this merge 3D. We're gonna go back to the camera tracker, go to solve and hit solve again. Now in the export tab, one more time, you're gonna go to unaligned, select all the trackers, set from selection, aligned, and now we're going to export. All right, let's bring this uh, camera tracker export down here. All right, let's disconnect this upper track that we have going on here. And I'm just gonna make a duplicate of it. I'm gonna keep it all intact just so that we have it for reference. Uh, and let's go back to our original footage. Let's take this magic mask from up here. Uh, we can actually just drag this into here to keep our computer running a bit smoother. We're gonna merge it back over itself. So right now we have our footage uh, just back to normal, but we have a 3D camera track of our face. <coughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> Shit. 
All right, so we have our 3D track merged over top of our footage. Now we need to add the subtitles, but to know the timing of the subtitles, we need to go back to the edit page and we need to listen to the audio and place markers for uh, every single word that is said. So I'm, so I turned off my clip just so that it plays back a little bit faster. And at the start of every word, I'm just gonna hit M to place a marker on the timeline. So M here, have you, so marker. And I, you can sort of just scrub through and you, you'll be able to hear it close enough. All right, so let's play it back. I have a marker placed for every single word. Great, let's press D to turn this clip back on and go back into Fusion. Let's add a text node and write out what we just said. All right, once you have it typed out here, you're actually gonna select it all. You're gonna go to the end of it and you're gonna duplicate it at least uh, once or twice. This is just gonna make sure that your text is never ending behind your head uh, so that it looks like a smoother cylinder. Once you have that done, you're going to add a Shape 3D node. That is going to plug into the Merge 3D. And if we look at that output here, uh, that's gonna put it on our face, track it to our face. We're gonna change this to a cylinder and we're gonna plug this text into uh, the material input of, or sorry, the scene input of Shape 3D. And that's gonna put our text around the cylinder. All right, so we're getting pretty close here. We have a cylinder track to our head. We got the text around it but it's all in front of her head and we need some behind her head. And that's where that magic mask from earlier is gonna pull in pretty clutch because now we can pipe something in uh, behind our head. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select all of this, Control C, and we're actually gonna paste an instance of all of this so that it's all linked. An instance pretty much means that all the parameters are linked to the original and then you can de-instance certain things uh, to fix that up. So with this copied over, we're gonna merge this first one behind our magic mask. And so far that made no difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our second instance of the shape 3D and we're going to go into visibility and we're going to right click and de-instance the vi visibility group. This means that we can control this independently from the first one. And we're going to make sure that we call the faces, which means we won't show the front face because this one is going behind her head, so we don't wanna show the front face of the shape. Now, let's go to the front piece, so the piece that's merged over the magic mask, and we're gonna go into visibility, and we're not gonna show the back section. And now, as you can see, the shape is around our head. And as you can see, we have this cylinder perfectly tracked to our head. Unfortunately, it's not centered right off the bat, so let's go in this and refine it and let's also add the animation of the of the title itself and then on the shape 3d node this is where the instances come in really handy is we're going to turn base subdivisions which is the circle right here down a little bit so it's rendering pretty much less faces of the circle uh, if you turn it down all the way it's going to turn into a triangle or a square uh, so let's just turn it down where it's still circle and we can see it good enough for now and then at, when we render it we can uh, increase the quality of that a bit as you can see, it's quite off-centered off my head and it's also at an angle, so let's fix that by going into the transform node. Let's move the translation with the X value over so that we're centered, and then let's also rotate the Z value for rotation to just square that up with my head a little bit better. And then now if we scrub through that, you can see it looks a lot better. It's around my head. Uh, I actually think it's a little far away from my head, so I'm just gonna turn the radius of the cylinder down and it's going to make it a little bit smaller. The size of the text can also go down. And for the text, we actually don't need an instance. I can just pipe it in into both uh, from one because they're the same for the front and the back face of the effect. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some animation to the actual text to highlight the words that are actually being said. So, so let's pump our text into the viewer right here. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger so that we can see what's going on. If you hit Control G, you're going to see the center crosshair, which is gonna be really helpful. And now let's open our keyframes because inside of keyframes, you can see all the markers that you placed on the timeline, which is gonna be really handy. With the text node selected, we're gonna to go to layout and we're going to uh, pretty much center each word on each marker. So let's go to the first word, which is have. So you're gonna add a keyframe there. Then let's go to the next marker. I'm gonna go back three frames and I'm gonna hit another keyframe and I'm gonna go back to that marker and I'm gonna center the next word, which is you. And now you do want these words to be pretty centered. So for temporary reasons, I'm gonna add a background on top of this text node. 
and I'm just going to add a rectangle. Uh, let's view that in our viewer. Let's make this rectangle a little bit smaller and let's also turn down the level. We'll delete this after, but this just helps us make sure our word is pretty close to center. Uh, it's a little easier than just following the center crosshair. All right, let's go to our next keyframe, go back three frames, hit a key keyframe. Let's go back to it. Let's center our next word, which is ever. All right, let's go to our next marker. Let's go back three. And if your words are really close together like mine, you can just go back two. It's just gonna change the easing of the animation. Let's add another keyframe. Let's go to our marker, center scene. And let's do that for the remaining words. All right, now the subtitles matches our voice and moves into the right place at the right time. We can delete this background because we don't need it anymore. Now let's go into the spline editor with our text selected, go into displacement, and we're going to hit F to smooth all of, or to flatten all of these out. Now, if we look at our final render, what's going on is for every word, it is rotating, but we need to make sure that the starting word is lined up good. So let's open our keyframes just to see where our marker is. So it's right here. So right now you want the word have uh, to be right at the front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our shape 3D and we're gonna transform and we're gonna rotate it on the Y axis and change the uh, have to be right at the front. So as we play this back, you can see that the words line up with what I'm saying and it's rotating around, but it's sort of hard to pick out the word and that's because it's all white and there's no highlight to the actual word itself. So to highlight the words, we're gonna do this in two passes. We're gonna do one pass of opacity and one pass of glow nodes. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a rectangle node to the entire text node uh, as a mask. And then we're gonna add another rectangle node below that. And this is going to be a subtraction node so it's gonna subtract what's ever inside of it, but we're gonna invert it. So now it's going to only highlight the node that's in the middle, so like so. But we want the other words to still be visible because otherwise that would ruin the point of an oscillating text effect. So we're gonna turn the level down a bit uh, to something maybe like so, so that you can still see the other text and it's still pretty easy to see, but the center text is really highlighted. So with the keyframe panel open, make sure that you're on your smaller rectangle. On each word, you're gonna just size it up to the word itself. So you're only gonna be keyframing the width slider here. Let's go, so have is now highlighted. We'll go to the next word, you. We're gonna make it a little smaller. Then we're gonna go over to ever. All right, let's go through every word like so. The width is now keyframed for every word. Let's open the spline editor. We're going to select all of the keyframes and hit F. And we're gonna hit T to open the ease in and the ease out. And we're just gonna drag the out over so that the word lasts a little bit longer. And ease in, we're gonna drag a little bit down. So that sort of flicks it over to the next word and makes it pretty much unnoticeable that it's highlighting different words in between. Now let's add a sequence of glow nodes. So shift spacebar glow. Let's start our glow with a really small size but a high intensity glow. And let's add another glow and let's increase the size a bit, but turn down the glow. Let's do it one more time. Increase the size more drastically, but we're gonna turn down the glow. All right, so now we have a nice glow effect. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Control C with this rectangle that we have already keyframed. And we're gonna paste an instance of it and pipe it into all of these glows. Now with the instance, we're going to de-instance this here so that we can invert it. And we're going to de-instance the soft edge and we're going to increase that a bit. We're also gonna make it a little bit taller. All right, we're getting pretty close here. Let's add some color to the text. I'm gonna go for sort of a teal look because that's always techy and futuristic. Let's go somewhere right around there. All right, so this is what our product looks like right now. We have the word highlighted, which looks great, and the other texts are faded a little bit. Uh, and now we're gonna do two more things to just make it pop a little bit more. So to start, we're gonna go back into our shape 3D, and we're gonna go into our controls and turn the base divisions up until it's not noticeable that you see any lines. So now we need to add some 3D depth blur to just separate it because obviously I'm shooting at a very low f-stop here. So the back of this should actually be out of focus behind my head. And how we're gonna go and do that is we're gonna go into the camera. Let's open that up in the 3D viewer. 
or actually let's open the merge up in the 3D viewer. Let's go into the camera and let's go into control visibility and we're gonna enable the focal plane. So now we can see where the focal plane is. Make sure that you deselect the lock on the camera and we're going to move the focal plane up to the front of the text. Let's zoom in here and look at it top down. Looks like that's about good. We're right in focus with the text there. And now on the camera tracker node, we're gonna go into accumulation effects. Make sure you're set to hardware renderer here because software render this won't show up. Uh, and we're gonna enable this and this is going to add some depth of field. So if we look at that there, now the back is very out of focus, way too out of focus actually. So we're gonna go back into it and we're gonna go amount of depth of field blur. We're gonna turn that down quite a bit, something like so. Before this magic mask, we just selected it to faster and it did a pretty great job of tracking our head. I'm just gonna add a little bit of blur to it so that it's a little bit softer around the back. Not too much, but just so that it's not such a harsh line right there. And we can turn this back on so that we have our depth of field and now we have our final product. Have you ever seen subtitles as cool as these? Let me show you how to make them. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this is only my second DaVinci Resolve tutorial, so if you guys have any suggestions or comments, please leave them down below. Again, I apologize for my voice and the cold that I have, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something valuable. See you next time.